uh, in pulse code modulation, we have seen that each sample we convert into the set of 8 bits and then that set of 8 bits we transmit over the channel. Now when we are sending each sample into 8 bits, so definitely that requires more bandwidth. So then the data modulation came into the picture. What it does is, it compares the present sample with the previous sample and if the present sample is more with compared to previous sample or present sample is less with compared to the uh, previous sample accordingly it will code that data in the form of a bit either a logic 1 or a logic 0. So that means you can say that it is also a one kind of differential pulse code modulation but here we are coding the difference into one bit only. So again if we wish to learn this delta modulation, so what exactly first we require? We require a modulating signal. So let's see that what kind of modulating signals we have. So we have this 1 kilohertz sine wave, if you see here, we are having this 1 kilohertz sine wave signal whose amplitude can be changed. So I can change its amplitude. So this is a 1 kilohertz sine wave and having as a modulating signal. Do we have any other modulating signal? Yes. We have a 2 kilohertz sine wave as another modulating signal. So this is the 2 kilohertz modulating signal and I can change its amplitude. Then I am having a 3 kilohertz modulating signal. So again I can change its amplitude also. So we have the third modulating signal as a 3 kilohertz sine wave signal. And lastly we have a 4 kilohertz modulating signal and we can change its amplitude. So this is we have 4 modulating signals. Now as we discussed that we need to compare the present sample and the previous sample. So you need to compare something. So what you need to do? I should have a comparator. So I am having a comparator over here. Now comparator output is the difference of these two samples, current and the previous, which is the encoded data. So I am just connecting this comparator's output to a flip-flop, which is nothing but it is acting as a latch. When I am having a flip-flop, which is a D flip-flop, so to operate that D flip-flop, you need a clock. So let's connect the clock to this D flip-flop. So this is my transmitter. Now, the sample which is latched into the D flip-flop, so up to the next sample clock will come, till that time, the previous sample will be stored. Now let's convert this data through a unipolar to bipolar converter. So we have converted this with a unipolar to bipolar converter. And this, we are giving this unipolar to bipolar to an integrator circuit, which is nothing but it is integrating the previous sample. So we are just connected to the integrator. Now I need to compare this previous sample with the current sample, which is the current input signal, modulating signal. So but let's give this integrator blocks output to one comparator input, which is nothing but that is a basically a previous sampled output. Now after doing that, you can see that this is a half of this we are conducting on the modulation part. So I got over here a 1 bit modulation which has compared the input signal and the previous signal. As of now I have not given any input signal but we will connect that. And that difference is latched over here. So let's transfer this data to the receiver. So what should happen? So exactly the replica in the reverse way. So I will be having this data output to the data input. Again I will need as it is a flip-flop, so you need a clock over here, the same clock at which the transmitter modulator is working. So let's connect the same clock, which is a receiver clock. So we are connecting this receiver clock. Then again, there is a unipolar bipolar converter, the same what we have at here. So we are connecting this unipolar bi converter to an integrator's block. And the integrator's output, which is nothing but which is following the input signal, let's connect that to a low-pass filter so that we can derive our modulating signal. Now before you connect the modulating signal, we should adjust this unipolar to bipolar converter such that there is no DC offset across this. So what I can do? Let's do or calibrate it by connecting a zero input voltage to the modulating signal input. So I am connecting the zero input signal to the modulating input. And let's observe the integrator's output. So we just connect the integrator's output. So we are getting the integrator's output. After connecting this ground, now let's see the integrator's output. So let's connect this integrator's output. We just want to see that our unipolar to bipolar converter is converting a symmetrical waveform across the zero line. So if you can see that, if I change this, you can see if I change the time base. 
you can see that there is some DC offset into this. So I just put it over here. If I change this, you can see that the slope is changing. Right now it is not in the balance condition. Now if it comes, this is the zero balance condition. If I go further, again the slope changes. So no, this is also not. So let's go and let's see that this is the zero position, zero balance condition. Expand this, I should get a triangular waveform. So I'm getting almost the triangular waveform with no DC offset. So with no DC offset, we are getting the signal. Now, so this is we can say that our input is balanced. Our input is now balanced. Now let's connect. This is what I'm getting the triangular graph. Now remove this ground and let's connect our modulating signal to the comparator. So I'm just connecting this one kilowatt sine wave to here. Now let's observe the modulating signal at the input of comparator. So we are observing the modulating signal at the input of comparator, which is a one kilowatt sine wave. Now you can see that this one kilowatt sine wave is compared with the input signal, which is coming from the integrator, which is the output of the previous sample input. And based on the difference of that, we are getting a stream of data over here. So if I connect channel 2, you can see that we are getting the stream of pulses. We are getting the stream of pulses over here. So based on the difference of the present sample and the previous sample, they have been coded and we are getting this data, which is this same data is latched into this flip-flop. So we are getting the same data over here and this is how the delta modulator is transmitting the present sample into the one bit by comparing it with the previous sample. Now let's see that how this signal is being converted by the unipolar to bipolar. So I can see that I am now getting here if I see if I go if I move this line to the center see if I remove channel 2 if I take it to the center and now if I connect unipolar to bipolar output, so you can see that we are getting a bipolar signal. There's not a minus 4 to plus 4 volt output. Now this signal is being integrated such that it is following our input signal. So let's connect this and let's see how this integrator output is, which is connecting to the which is connecting to the input. Now you can see that the this is my internally generated RAM which is following the input signal. And at every sample point, the current value of the RAM and the signal is being compared. And if the input signal is low, then my output may be logic 1. And if the input with RAM is low, then it is 0. So this is how we are converting the information into in the form of 0 and 1. And that is again on the difference of current sample and the previous sample. Now the same signal what we had given, the signal is going to the at the input of the receiver. Here again it has been converted into the unipolar to bipolar. This is going to the integrator's input and we are getting the integrator's output. Here we are getting the same sim signal. So exactly delta modulation and delta demodulation are the almost they are having the same blocks and the replica of generating the signal. And from here if we filter out the signal, you can see that we are getting the sine wave which is nothing but which is a signal which we have connected to the input. But now you can see that the signal is not a pure sine wave. It is a distorted wave. And there is nothing but this is because of the quantization noise because internally RAM which is generating, so we need to change the state size. So how we can change the state size? The signal is sampled and that data is being converted to the by unipolar to bipolar and then it is converted into the uh, by integrated internal RAM. So basically the state size will be changed by changing the clock frequency of this D flip flop. That is the sampling frequency. So now let's change this. We have the switch selection switch, so it, it is 0, 1, so you can see that that is a little bit improved. Let's change it to the 1, 0, so which is some higher frequency, that is a 200 kilohertz, earlier it was 0, uh, 100 kilohertz. Then let it to be 1, 1, so which is nothing but that is the 400 kilohertz, so you can see that we are almost getting a sign there and the quantization noise is being removed at the receiver end. And you can see that how super way the internally generated ramp is now following the signal. The we, we have increased the clock speed, so as we have increased the clock speed, the step size has also reduced and this is how v, the step size is uh, lower, steps are fast and this is how this signal is being mapped by the internal generator RAM and the quantization noise at the receiver end is 
uh, reduced. So this is how we can see that how it has been uh, done. Now, uh, let me connect the input signal again here. So let me connect the input signal here and let's see the output and the receiver. Now, increase the input signal frequency. Right now it is 1 kilohertz. So let me put it uh, 2 kilohertz. So when I connect it to 2 kilohertz, you can see that still I am getting the sine wave. If I change the amplitude, you can see that yes, my delta modulation and demodulation is working fine. If I Increase the input frequency to 3 kilohertz. You can see that yes, fantastically, we are getting the output. Let it let's put it to the 4 kilohertz. So we are connecting to the 4 kilohertz. So now you can see that yes, this is my signal what you are getting over here. And you can see that if I simply this change we let it change the position here. Uh, let me increase. So I have connected the signal of integrator's output at the receiver and now you can see that my signal is almost a triangular. If you can see that the signal is a, a triangular kind of a signal. If I let me do this, let me increase this. Right. So almost it is a triangular the integrator's output. This part of I am giving a sine wave. So my internal signal, the internal the ramp which is being generated, that is not following the signal. Because there are two reasons. The input signal is rapidly changing because its frequency is 4 kilohertz and the state size is not enough to follow that and that is the reason we are getting the triangular wave and that is nothing but this, this is called as the slope overload error. Now there are two ways. How can I reduce this slope overload error? Either you simply go back to the reducing the input signal frequency. So we have reduced the input signal frequency and then you can see that you are almost getting the sine wave. So we have reduced the input signal frequency. Else, but this is you cannot do. So I am just again connecting the high frequency and I am getting the almost the sine wave. So I am getting the sine wave. So another way is to reduce the magnitude, that is the amplitude of the modulating signal. So let's reduce this amplitude of modulating signal. You can see that now it is instead of instead of triangular, now you are getting a properly sine wave which can be filtered out over here and we are getting a sine wave. So this is how you are getting at the this. So you can reduce the slow overload error by two ways. Either you reduce the frequency of input signal or you reduce the amplitude of the signal and you can overcome the slow overload error. But now both the things are practically not possible. How can I reduce the amplitude? So there is another way that you can change the integrator's gain so that it can follow the rapid change of input signal fastly. So now again increase the amplitude. So I am just increasing the amplitude. You can see that it has become the triangular. And now we have the integrator block over here, integrator gain block here. I have kept it for a manual setting. So manually we can change by the combination of the switch, we can change the integrator's gain at transmitter and similarly we can change the integrator's gain at the receiver. So let me change it. So I am just putting it to the 0, 1 and it's 0, 01 so you can see that almost there is some change into the signal let me go to the 1 and 0 let me go to the 1 and 0 you can see that yes it has quite improved and let it be put into the 1 1 so i'm just putting it to the 1 1 and you can see that the signal is now the almost it is the sine wave and the step size has come quite a closer to that and now if i filter it out you can see that we are getting a same modulating signal what you have. So even though my amplitude has gone down, even though my amplitude is maximum, still now I can overcome the slow overload error. That is how that we are doing with the integrator thing. But now if my signal amplitude is low, but still my gain will be high. So again what will happen? Again the noise will come. So if I do that, you can see that, I mean, so this is quantization noise again has came into the picture. 